I slipped. <laughs> so I bought a trailer, sight unseen, and an equipment auction. It's actually a government auction. The U.S. Navy on this trailer. And uh, we got to go up to the northern corner of the state to go get it. And I thought, why not take some back roads? Apparently, uh, that's why we're not supposed to take some back roads. But we're just going to ignore that. Because we're not in a truck. We're in a rector. That's what I'm going with. But we're out, look at like middle of nowhere. Look at the view out here. Yeah. Some super cool ranches out here. Hey, look, there's a truck right there, Casey. Yeah, hey, if that truck could be here, this truck could be here. There you go. Like cool old cabins on these old ranches out here. We're yeah. like taking the most back road through the middle of nowhere mountains way we could think of to get here. So we're going to enjoy some scenery, head up north, and hope I didn't uh, waste my money. Look at that old cabin. This is why we go roads like this. Uh, yeah, we'll see if I wasted my money. I got burned on this or not, but the US Navy owned it So it probably hardly ever got used and got maintained a lot is what I'm banking on. We're gonna find out when we get there for now Back road in not a truck Definitely not a truck. Like Casey said, we're in a record Some rugged terrain out here though. Yeah, it is I can't imagine why they wouldn't want trucks out here on these roads. But why would I want to miss these beautiful views? It's so cool out here. Yeah, it's gorgeous out here. So now we're up along the John Day River, heading out towards Spray. The river's moving too. wondering how you get groceries if you live somewhere in the middle of nowhere like this here's the grocery store there's your produce there's your meats and cheeses and there's your beer you got some dairy over there that's uh oh some some onions that's the grocery store a substitute freezer oh oh hey your favorite Frozen pizza and ice cream. There you go. That's right. The good stuff. The good stuff. Casey's favorite. Okay, well we got our sustenance until uh, we get up into civilization. And uh, we shall continue down the road. So, you coming back to go fishing? Probably. We heard all the fishing stories in there. Apparently. This big. This is the place to be if you want to do some fishing. So. I think Ethan's gonna make a trip back. I don't have Absolutely. patience for fishing, so I'm not gonna do that. Well, it's, uh, from what from what she tells us, it's more like catching. That's I don't a, have the patience for that either. No. No. There's work to be done. There's right time here. for fishing. There's no, no time to recreate. No. Work is recreation. Are you sure? There's a recliner on the porch. Finally, my people. <laughs> I like it. It's a full-on like flower print recliner oh, right it's, it's, there. It's fantastic. Use oh. the power of editing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's a love seat. It's a love Even seat. Better. For you and me, Casey. A flower print love seat. <laughs> Notice I didn't stop. Yes. Oh, that's uh, let's turn the Jake break off. Okay. Up the road we go. in the woods now. The terrain changes so much out here. Now we're into some steep twisty woods. Looks like we got some switchbacks coming up. Got a lot greener. And a lot steeper. sharp and when you gotta bend down to look up out the side window to see the road this is a, like this is how it is like back where I live or am from in Northern California the steeper twistier windier stuff it's like this reminds me of back home green trees 
steep, twisty, windy roads. Like, this is much more like back home. serious twisties coming up. Yeah, the, the road is below us. You know the good thing about that though? It means if we screw up and fall off the road, we just end up right back on the road. Oh, that's it's, good. It's right there. Yeah. Don't screw up, Casey. That's why they didn't put a guardrail here, is because you'll just go right back to the road. Oh, okay. It's no big deal. You're pretty smart, man. You know that? Yeah. But look, now the road's above us. <laughs> Found a wind farm. Yeah, they've got it turned up pretty high today. Yeah. They're blowing around. Over yeah. there, there's like where the big power lines come in, and then there's the, the transformers, and then it sends the power to those and spins them. And yeah. This is where all the wind comes from. Yeah. They overdo it sometimes, they need to slow it down. Really, yeah, they need to chill. Man, they use so much power, you see how big the lines are? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Where are we at, Casey? We are... Take nine? the exit on the right to I-84 East toward Pendleton. That's where we are. Yes. Okay. Also, can we take a second to appreciate all the locomotives over there? Holy crap, that is a lot. Yeah. That is a lot. I wonder if that's a work train and part of those are grinders and rail maintenance stuff. Who knows? Oh, I thought a whole lot of locomotives all the time. Yeah. We are 14 minutes away. Don't mind me, just lost over here. Okay, we're not from around here. We gotta go in that driveway and then through the side of that fence, it looked like. The problem with these yards is they, they set up like uh, storage yards off of the military base itself so that you don't have to do all the on-base stuff to get on base, which I've had to do in the past. It's a pain in the ass. But um, they just set them up in these random places. A lot of times there's like chain link fence set up not really a road to them. The addresses don't make sense because there actually isn't one. It's just like a lot they found to put a yard in. So, I, looks like what this is too. This is the most civilized I've seen so far though, of these <laughs> yards. Oh man, they got all sorts of stuff here. Oh yeah. See, it's just like a gate in the side of the fence. And a... So, even though we're off the active military base, boy, do they get upset about some camera filming. Um, that got it's made real fast and we got it talking to so uh we turned that on right as we crossed out of the gate so we're technically legal again but you're not going to see any of the footage of what happened inside that gate because uh the government got mad at us so we're gonna go down the road and then we're going to show you what i bought so, all that anticipation like getting here to see it finally and yeah then, right uh, and I was also, I was using a pistol adapter, something I've never, like, I don't think I've ever shown before. Yeah. Like, actual in use, so that was cool to, like, show hooking up to it. Man, did they not think so. No, they weren't impressed. No. I think they were impressed that we had the balls to pull out a camera on the government thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. 
Bye bye, government guys. Um, don't worry. See you later, Fed boys. You will not see your face on my YouTube channel, and then hopefully I will not see your boss's face on my doorstep. Yes. Deal. All right. Done. Truth. I do that deal. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go down the road and show everybody what I bought. We're down the road now, and uh, I've got me a 1990 Miller 35 foot flatbed. It's an old steel deck flatbed, closed tandem axle. Sometimes these say on them what the government paid for it back when it was new, but I don't see a number on that. Do you? Uh, hmm. Over here, maybe? Hey, I got some registration up there. That's cool. Either way, this front headboard here is removable. That comes off. Uh, we're a truck stop here. It's got hazmat placards, so it doesn't matter what I do. What I noticed in the pictures and was hoping was the case is brand new tires all the way around. And I was hoping they weren't brand new 20 years ago and all dry rotted out. They're not. These actually look like new, new. Then all of the lights on it work, which is a bonus. Everything lights wise works. And then here's the other thing. I noticed in the pictures, brand new slack adjusters, camshafts, got good brakes on it. And then the springs all inside of there, all the springs look brand new. So they put all new brakes on this thing very recently and they converted it over to automatic slack adjusters. And that's all the way around. So that is very cool. You see brand new brake shoes on there. Actually, yeah, all these are brand new shoes. That's awesome. Hopefully that means they did, since they did new tires, new brakes, converted over. Hopefully that means they did wheel bearings and stuff too. I would bet they probably did. I mean, we got good hub oil on it. We got a hub meter on it. 19,535 miles on this trailer. Since this hub meter was put on, who knows when that is. Maybe that's since it's like last rebuild or whatever. But it's got strap winches on it. Not a whole lot, but some. This kind of a rub rail here. 35 foot deck. This is not going to be a great like general freight trailer because it's, it's a 48 foot would be like the minimum for that. This is 35, but it will be a good shenanigans trailer. Does this have a price on it? Nope. And I don't want to do general freight. I want to do shenanigans and that's what this would be perfect for. And my secret project that I talked about the last trailer I was looking at, yeah. this will work for that, okay. which is what I really need in a trailer for. That other one was super nice but it was also a full aluminum trailer. And I don't need full aluminum. I really don't want full aluminum because full aluminum has got a big arch in them and that'll kind of hinder what I want to do. This steel one, nice and flat. The combos with the steel frame and aluminum deck, they have a little bit of bow to them, not bad. That'd be fine. Uh, the other thing is kind of a bummer is I use my fifth wheel adapter here to hook up to this instead of chain slinging it and we were filming how this all works when we got um uncle sam Samuel. when when the alphabet boys came down on us so uh maybe when i get back home i'll show you how all this couples together and works and goes and what's going on here yeah. actually i know i'll do that so for now we're gonna go inside get some food and then hit the road headed for home we'll show you some cool stuff if we see it if not we'll show you how that works when we get there yeah. in case he was yelling at us yeah, the, me and the, the lady in the GPS, we we argue like all day and never agree on anything. So we're stopping here. We're just going to pull over and check the temperature of the hubs. We've gone far enough. If they're going to get hot, they would be hot by now, but not so far. It would have melted down. ones in the sun are like 125 and the ones over here on the shady side are like 105. So. 20 degree differential doesn't seem too bad. No. All good. Let's uh, continue. Back on the road we go. And enjoy the view. The old Columbia River. Here comes that train. Oh yeah. We saw it on the way here. I've seen videos of them. I've never seen one in person. One of the semis that pulls the trains, the work trains. We got it down there. It's got three drive axles on it and it's got all the high rail gear and it's uh, Western Star. And they hook it up to a line of train cars and they pull train cars with it for doing all the work stuff. They had, what, seven, eight train cars hooked to the back? They had a lot. So, with like, an excavator on top. Yeah, and there was so. an excavator on top of one. I was surprised how many, but 
I've seen videos of them. That was the first time I ever got to see one in person. So that was cool. It's pretty nifty. Yeah. All right, let's go home. Okay. Where are we, Casey? Biggs Junction. And that's Washington right there. That's the Columbia River. This is 97 that goes down towards Bend, which is home. That's Washington. That's Oregon. That's big, Casey. This big 13 axle so set up over here. Casey's a big truck guy. Continue on US 97. There's part of me that really misses heavy haul and wants another multi axle setup. That's a nice, nice setup. Maybe one day. So we made it home. It was a very uneventful trip, which is exactly what you want when you buy something new sight unseen. I put your, uh, put your feet down. Probably a little tall, but... Yeah, you put them all the way down. I did, well, I put them on the ground. Okay, so, I was going to show you the fifth wheel adapter. So to do that, I should probably unhook the fifth wheel adapter. Yes. And show you how we hook it back up. So, I'll do that. So this is the the fifth wheel adapter. You see, here's the fifth wheel. Uh, it's also got a pinnel hitch on it, and if I want to pull a bumper pull trailer or a gooseneck, this unbolts. This comes off, and there's another piece that goes here that is your hitch ball to pull whatever. So that adapter here can make you pull all the different type of trailers, from semi trailer to fifth wheel RVs, bumper pull, pinnel hitch gooseneck all the stuff and it drops into these fork receivers here pins in place in the bottom and then you can hook up to stuff so here we're hooking up to the fifth wheel trailer that we just unhooked from to show you how to hook up to it you see there's a king pin there and you see there's a hole there we're gonna put the two together so I'm leaving the air hooked up just because we already have it hooked up but uh, you line up you extend out bring it up to height Put it right in there. Then this pin you can see goes right in here into the groove of the king pin, and that locks it in place just like if it was in the wheel of the truck. Then you put this pin in to hold it, and uh, we've got it. So then once you have air to it to release the brakes, you can pick it up and pull it in. the distance you put it out is just how much clearance you want the only thing is you now have a pivot point here and a pivot point here which is no good now granted this is all the way in this is locked for the most part but it does have a little bit of movement so I always chain it straight uh, just to take all that out so there's it's not sitting here kind of wiggling back and forth that little bit of play it has and then the chains also help hold this down so I'm not relying on this pin so I had it just chained out of the chain pockets under the crossbar and into there so that when it pulls tight like so it doesn't have to be like screaming tight but you can see how that's coming out of the chain pocket and it's pulling this down which means these it's not relying on these pins if for some reason it tried to bounce out of there, which it's really not going to do. What I would normally do that I didn't do this time is use the tie back points that I broke off because this is exactly what they're for. I would normally pull all the chain out of here, come back here, drop the chain through, and use I used the bent to one, of course. Right, yeah. Either way. It would go in there much nicer if it wasn't bent. There it goes. And then, when I bump this out, that on each side is what would hold that straight. And I would leave this hanging here because then, if I need to adjust the height for whatever reason, I have room to do so without 
stress on the chain because it's tied in here. The way I had it today where I went off the chain pocket, if I go up and down the height, it would change the tension on the chain. So normally I'd do this, but I broke it and haven't fixed it yet. But in all reality, the very little amount of force that has to hold, this would hold no problem, but I didn't want to be hooked to it, going down the road, get inspected, and then I got to hook to a broken part, and then I get a ticket, and those type of things. So, But the same deal is once that's tight, it comes underneath, goes up here, hooks to this, and holds it down into the uh, uh, receivers, and that also kicks the receivers over so they can't do any wiggle and move it, and it takes all the slop out of this whole system. In all reality, this is totally unnecessary. You could just leave this up against there. It would have a little side-to-side -side slop. And as you go forward and backward rocking, this would have a little bit of slop just in that there, but I like it all, like no movement at all. So I chain it just out of preference. You could also use the hooks right there, either over the top or under the bottom. See, yeah, kicks it to the side. Yeah. Because uh, we're out some. And same thing, that's going to hold it all in place where it doesn't move. And these pins really are plenty because it's not going to bounce up out of there, but I just prefer to hook to that side. Just take all of the possible wiggle and movement out of there just to make it smoother. But since we're not doing any of that, we now, before we unhook our air, we extend this out. We're going to park it right here for now so that we can work on it where all our parts are and stuff. Go over it, make sure it's all good to go. So now, we pull the pin. Which we're sitting against it a little bit, but that's fine. And then we get out of here. Just like that. That's super nice. Yeah. And then this pin sits back in here. If we want to use this for the pinnel hitch, we could use it as is. If we wanted to use it for like a gooseneck or trailer ball, you pull this pin out and this plate comes off and it's just that part of it to use for that. And then now we can take our air from here. I slipped. <laughs> I tried to grab it in my hand and push the collar. I, I didn't have it like I thought I did. Clearly. But now our trailer brakes are set. This trailer is good. We can put all our stuff away. I have the two air ports over here. They just quick couple into the back of the truck. Then have your normal glide hand on this end. And then the electrical cord for the trailer just plugs in where the uh, transmitter for the wireless lights does. If the lights work, Plug it in, if not, use the wireless light bar. Like I said, terrible, terrible trailer for general freight because it's so short. It just won't fit most stuff. But for the oddball, weird, one-off, shenanigans type stuff, which is what I'm gonna do, I don't wanna do general freight. It's a flatbed trailer, so. That's that, there'll be some shenanigans with it soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you're wondering why I towed it with the Zach lift instead of taking that off and just using the normal fifth wheel truck, because for those of you that don't know, this is a normal fifth wheel truck that hooks to trailers like that just the same as any other. Uh, two reasons. One, uh, driving hundreds and hundreds of miles away with that weight on the back of there is so much nicer and smoother than doing it bobtail. And two, I'd never seen this trailer before. I know nothing about this trailer. Going into it totally blind. And with this setup here, I have all my tools, all my electrical stuff, everything to repair and replace airlines. Dude, I've got all complete new airlines I could splice in there. I've got everything I needed to do mechanically to this thing for the most part. Lights, air, I could pull wheel bearings apart if I had to. This just gave me options where if I took just the truck, I would have meant all that is at home and I would have just been hoping for the best. So that's why that happened, mainly for the comfort, but partially for all the tools and stuff. Okay, I'm tired, has a lot of driving. Rusty looks like he's ready to go and relax. So we're gonna go do that. See you next time for real this time.